Hello everybody, how are you all tonight? I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If you'd like to join our live chat tonight, um, you need to be logged into your Gmail account or your YouTube channel. And that's simply what YouTube calls an account. It's hooked up to your Gmail account. If you don't have either of those, you can still leave a comment um, in the comments section below me. It is Tuesday, the 24th of July, 2021. And as Paula said in her comment, we are living in interesting times. And this is a YouTube live event. Now, before we get started, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Please give us a thumbs up. Just click on that thumb up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do and that's easy you just click on the subscribe button and then if you click on the bell you'll be notified every time we go live or upload a new video now tonight's show might be a tad controversial and that's okay as long as everyone remembers that we are all adults and we are all entitled to our own opinions and to express them things will be fine just remember to be polite and to treat others and their comments the way you would like them to treat you and your comments. So just extend that courtesy to other people's. Um, if that's the case, I'm happy to leave the chat up. Now just please remember, just because you think something is great and it works for you, it may not be great or workable for someone else. Now, that doesn't mean you can't share your idea, your tip, your hint, your advice. But just remember, they don't have to take it. And if someone does share some advice with you, say thank you. You don't, whether you use it or not, they're sharing their experience with you. So please be polite. Now, yes, interesting times, guys. So I have a question for you. If all the deliveries to all the shops stopped today, would you be able to survive? Now, I noticed over on our Cheapskates Chatter Facebook page, a few of you said, oh, yes, yes, we're right, we're set. Okay, that's good. I've got some questions, so keep listening. I've got more questions. Um, is your pantry stocked with ingredients that you can use to prepare a variety of dishes? Remember, remember ingredients give you options is your freezer packed with meat with fish with poultry with fruit and vegetables do you have a stockpile of toiletries and cleaning supplies does your car have a full tank of fuel now i know if you're in lockdown woohoo we are it may seem a silly question but you can still drive and probably still are driving somewhere. And if trucks stop delivering, that includes the fuel tankers. And service stations don't keep a stockpile of fuel in their tanks. In fact, you know, the whole country, the whole of Australia only has a 50 day supply of fuel at any given time. So keep your petrol tank or your fuel tank full for the time being now if all those things happened what would you do imagine if you can or if you would there's a national transport strike how would you survive do you have enough food to last a day or do you have enough food to last two or three days could you go for a week could you go longer without having to um, find a source of food? And then what about medicines? What about baby needs? Do you have formula? Do you have nappies? Do you have wipes? Do you have the Panadol drops, whatever you need for your baby? Do you have enough of those to last? Now, I'm asking all these questions, and I know I've asked them in the past, but I'm asking them again because there's a transport strike planned for Friday of this week with around 7,000 toll IPEC drivers striking. 
they're doing a wage negotiation that's not going their way, so they're striking. And then next Tuesday, which is the 31st of August, we have um, truck drivers planning to blockade the highways at state borders in protest over um, the proposal to enforce vaccination on them for them to have to have vaccinations to be able to go from state to state. Now, this isn't a show about vaccination, so not interested in talking about that. We're talking about something else that's just as important, <laughs> or it will be if, you know, come next Tuesday night, you find your pantry's empty. So if they stop at the borders and stop trucks getting through, that means no deliveries to supermarkets. No deliveries to butchers or to wholesale fruit and veg markets, which means your greengrocer won't be able to go and buy his produce. There will be no milk deliveries, no pharmaceutical deliveries, no fuel deliveries, we talked about that, no parcel deliveries. There will be no pickups from farms and factories. There will be no containers picked up from the wharves. Nothing will be moving between states by road. Now, our rail system is limited, truly limited. doesn't matter what they say. It is limited. So nothing will be moving between states. Think about it. Think of the bananas that come from Queensland, the, the sugar. Think of everything that comes from somewhere by road. If it's not moving, we don't get it. Now, I imagine supermarket shelves will empty in minutes because most households simply don't run an active working pantry. We, we saw what happened with the panic buying during our first lockdown. It, and here we are in lockdown six or seven, whatever you want to call it, and it seems that most people haven't learned from that because every time a lockdown's announced, those same people rush out and panic buy over and over and over. So most homes wouldn't have enough food to last more than one or two days. Some might be able to stretch it to three or four days, but stretching it to a week and the food situation in that house would be dire, absolutely dire. And you know what? I'm a truck driver's daughter. So I've been doing some research um, today. I spent, I spent most of my day doing this. And the advice coming from the truckies themselves is to be prepared for at least two weeks of supply chain disruptions. Two weeks, 14 days. So imagine the chaos that's going to happen. And you know what? Imagine if it was just 25% of the truck drivers that choose to choose to choose to join the blockades and stop the movement of food and goods between states. It would be devastating to the whole country. Localized shortages would happen almost immediately. Because people would panic buy. They'd race out and they'd buy the bread and they'd buy the milk and they'd clean out the meat cabinets and the, the produce cabinets and they'd empty the freezers of the peas and corn and stuff. And those shortages would continue then because there wouldn't be any deliveries so that the staff could restock the shelves. But it wouldn't just be supermarket shelves that emptied either. It would be your chemist. He wouldn't be able to get his drug deliveries. It would be your hardware store. They wouldn't be able to get their nuts and bolts or their paint or their plants for their nurseries. The news agents, um, department stores. And we know department stores are already um, struggling with getting stock. Service stations, of course. Even your corner milk bar would have trouble getting the stock it needs to stay open that it needs to supply you, the customer. Now, with a fully stocked pantry, you'd be fine. 
even with a three quarter stocked pantry, you'd probably be okay. So while everyone else is pushing and shoving and queuing up to buy bread and milk and arguing about um, limits on things, you could be safely and happily at home preparing dinner for your family from your pantry. So think about it and be honest. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I don't want, it's, this isn't fear mongering. It's not scaring, scare tactics. There's nothing in it for me. I'm just asking questions and offering some suggestions. But would you truly be okay? Do you have enough flour and yeast to make bread? Now, my bread recipe uses 460 grams of flour per loaf. We use mm, five loaves of bread a week. So I'd need to have three kilos of flour on hand just to keep us in bread for a week. So six kilos to keep us in bread for a fortnight, um, plus extra for other baking, like um, the cakes, the biscuits, the muffins, whatever, and for our pizza bases that we make for a Thursday night. Or would you perhaps have freezer space to be able to put some loaves of bread in the freezer? Because no deliveries means no ingredients and no mixes dropped at your local bakery so they'd be closed fairly quickly. And if you thought you were going to be able to buy bread there, won't be happening. Once they run out, they run out and they will have to close. Same deal with the supermarket. Once, once what they have stockpiled is gone, it's gone. Now, I, I buy yeast in 500 gram packets and it lasts a few months. And when one opens, I replace it straight away. So we're set for yeast. But, you know, what about you? Do you have enough yeast? Do you have enough UHT or powdered milk on hand to last at least two weeks? I saw that Maureen said she'd stockpiled powdered and UHT milk. We use three litres of milk a week. So for two weeks, I'd need six cartons of UHT milk or enough powdered milk to make the three litres. So a kilo of powdered milk would last us a bit over two weeks. Now we keep more than that in the pantry because we use it, I use it in baking, I use it in making sauces and custards and things and I use it when we go away. So we have it in the pantry all the time so we'd be fine. But if you have small children, how much milk do you use a week? Thinking um, breakfast cereals, drinks, whatever tea and coffee how much milk do you, you know, how much would you um, need to last the two weeks that's being suggested could happen would you be able to maintain your standard of living for that time or you know, would you be one of the masses out there on Tuesday afternoon panic buying staples and hoping that what you can grab will last to get you through until the trucks start rolling again this is just one scenario that can affect your food security and the thing is it could well affect your food security over the coming week what are we going to do now i'm not telling you to run out tomorrow because most of us aren't just locked down. We here in Melbourne have a curfew, so, you know, shops are shut. So we can't go late night shopping. And I don't want you to go crazy at the supermarket. What I'm going to suggest, though, is that perhaps when we finish tonight, you take a good look at what's in your pantry, what's in your fridge, what's in your freezer, and what's on your shopping list. And then think about how long you'll be able to eat, stay clean, clean your house with what you have. Then look at what you would need to fill the gaps to stretch it out so that you can last two weeks. Because it's not just having the um, three dozen tins of baked beans and the you know, the 12 cakes of soap and the 14 bottles of shampoo. It is, like I said, making sure you have enough flour to make bread if you can't buy bread. Um, 
or scones or pancakes or flatbreads or something? Do you have enough to be able to do that? And I would suggest that you do it, do it tonight and start thinking about filling the gaps and plan on doing that sooner rather than later because right now there hasn't been a lot of mainstream media um, attention focused on either of these, either the strike or the blockades for whatever reason. But as soon as, you know, Tuesday morning happens and the borders are shut because of trucks blockading them and nothing can get through, mainstream media is going to pick up on it and it's going to be the biggest drama of the year in Australia. And people will panic. They will start to go crazy. So if you've got gaps to fill, do it now. Do it sooner rather than later. Look, this is advice I would give you anyway. It's not, you know, I don't, I don't tell you to eat from, you know, shop daily or whatever. I will keep a full pantry. Keep your pantry full. You know how long you need it to last you or how long you want your pantry to last you. So keeping it full just makes sense. It's not something I would just say to you because there's going to be a strike and a blockade. But don't wait to fill the gaps ever. If you have gaps in your pantry, fill them. Because right now in 2021, there are too many shortages and delays happening to wait to fill those gaps. Because if you wait, you could well miss out. So when I was thinking about what we need, it will be things like fresh milk, uh, cream, frozen bread, uh, frozen bread, frozen veg, maybe fresh bread, but I can make it. Um, and then fresh vegetables, potatoes, onions, carrots are usually the ones that I, I buy most. And they're the basics because if you've got the basics covered, you've, you've got options and you can at least eat. Now, milk freezes, so if you don't like long-life milk or powdered milk, remember you can freeze it, and that's really simple. The only thing I will remind, ask you to remember to do, take just a little bit, probably a quarter of a cup out of the top of the bottle before you put it in the freezer because it will swell and you don't want it to burst and break the lid and overflow in the freezer and make a mess. Bread freezes, we all know that. It's old news. Potatoes will keep for weeks in the pantry if they're kept dry and dark. So if they come in a plastic bag, take them out of the plastic bag, throw a tea towel or an old beach towel or something over them, keep them dark and cool, they will be fine. Carrots will keep in the fridge for weeks in the fresh and crisp bags. Love those bags. Fruit, um, apples, oranges, mandarins will all keep in the fruit, uh, fruit in the fridge for weeks. So if you think fresh food is what you're going to run out of, think about what you eat and what keeps in the fridge and what can be frozen and get enough of that stuff. If you can't get fresh fruit or you don't think fresh fruit will last, tinned fruit's just as good. Tinned peaches, tinned pears, tinned apricots, plums, um, <sighs> berries are all good. It's still good. You can do these things um, quite easily if you think about it. And if you do it now, you've got a better chance of being able to fill the gaps and fill them without being pressured and stressed and worried about somebody getting too close to you and they're reaching in front of you and they're breathing on you and you don't want to do that. So... You need to use your, use your brain and, and stop and think about it. Um, now, you guys will know that I just have a, I have a big pantry. Well, the pantry itself is not big, but I keep a big stock, big pantry stock. So I have enough of the basic items, the flour, the sugar, I've dried fruit, even breakfast cereals, spices, pasta, um, toiletries and cleaning supplies, Whew. jam's easy because we make it. I've got tea and coffee. We have milk powder. 
We've got plenty of sauces. The freezer and the shelves have meat and poultry on them and fish. And there's plenty of preserved fruits and veggies to last us a while. So two weeks without having to worry about shopping or not being able to buy what I need will be fine. After that, I will start looking for fresh, fresh, you know, fresh veggies. Because our garden, you know, our garden's not producing too much at the moment. So I would want those. So I'd be on the hunt for those. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that you rush out and spend a fortune stocking up on groceries. Because that's not what we do. But if you have a stockpile of basic groceries, it's a good idea at any time because there's so many other things that can happen in our life where we need to rely on our pantries, not just the trucks not moving. Now, right now, joy of joys, it could be that you need to isolate for 14 days. Well, this was an absolute distinct possibility for us after a guy Wayne works with had an alert to tell him on Friday that he'd been to an exposure site and needed to go get tested and isolate pronto. So worst thing was that one guy had been actually in face-to-face -face contact with everybody in the company in that couple of days, Thursday and Friday. So that meant if his test came back positive, they all had to go get tested. And then if that, because Wayne lives here, we would have had to, it was going to be a nightmare. Anyway, the test came back negative, was the answer to prayer, I can tell you. But if it had come back positive, you know, Wayne would have had to stay home from work. But we would have survived because we've got food in the pantry, because we have cleaning supplies in the laundry, because we have toiletries in the bathroom. We would have survived. But COVID aside, even a week of being stuck home with sick children could cause difficulties in so many homes because there isn't a stocked pantry. You know, if you've got little ones that get sick, whether it's with bronchitis or chicken pox, whatever, you're stuck at home with them. You can't drag them around. You need a backup of some groceries. Well, there's dozens of reasons, absolutely dozens of reasons for maintaining a working stockpile. That, that's just a few. And yes, I know if you're stuck at home, you can do an online order. But um, there's no guarantee you'll get everything on your list. Delaney posted over in um, on our Cheapskates chatter page earlier this evening about her online shopping. Um, not everyone has you know, access to home delivered groceries. Oh, no. <laughs> what a shock. We live in 2021. But, you know, not everyone lives in a major city with access to such a luxury. And it is a luxury to be able to order your groceries online, get them delivered to the door. Whew. It's a luxury, guys. So, you know, I don't, I don't want you to panic. But I've got some things that I think, you know, we might be able to think about tonight, tomorrow, over the next couple of days. One is, do you have a complete stockpile? How long can you live from it? Now, I noticed someone in the comments in the chat said um, they might be right except for pet food. Okay. So... Does this, does the idea of a transport strike or a blockade cause you to panic? You can be honest with yourself. Nobody's going to know. Or are you going to be like, yep, yeah, yeah, fine, job's done. We're okay because we have, you know, we've thought, we've worked, we've thought ahead, planned ahead. We've got enough peanut butter and we've got enough tin foil and we've got enough bleach and we've got enough toothpaste and uh, coffee and what else can I see in there? Rice flour, olive oil, barbecue sauce. We've got enough to last us for however long we need to be. 
unable to shop? Um, they're the questions. Just think about them and think how they would, will, will, you know, think how your answers can affect perhaps how you survive the next couple of weeks. Because whether the Friday strike goes ahead and it's only supposed to be for 24 hours um, and the major hiccup with that that I can see is it will be more parcel deliveries that are probably going to be affected. So if you're waiting for a parcel, <laughs> it might take a few extra days to get here. Or whether it's the blockade and whether it goes ahead, whether it's a massive thing or just a few trucks protesting and the truck drivers protesting. I don't know. I can't see into the future. But I can tell you that this is yet another occasion when being wise enough to plan ahead, to shop ahead, to think about what you need, what you use, and keeping even one or two as a backup is a really, really sensible thing to do. So now I'm going to go click. Sorry about the scratching. It's the mousy thing. All right. Now lots of comments, guys. I'm going to scroll right to the top. All right. So I mentioned Paula and Yvonne. Beverly, <sighs> Beverly's just ordered more online. Hope you can get it. Um, there's Maureen with her powdered milk and UHT milk. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, Beverly, uh, freezing and howling the gal. I was watching because I was looking for what was happening in Sydney for Wayne's dad and the rain you guys have had. It's very, been very cold here yesterday and today. But, um, and they keep promising rain, but it doesn't come. And Joe's back in lockdown in New Zealand. No. <sighs> having a fully stocked pantry keeps us safe. Fills bellies, but it keeps you safe too. Um, lockdown and freezing in Canberra. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Paula's right. Now is not the time to stop stockpiling. Um, hello, Annette. Right. Now, oh, I've lost the. Um, Kerry's got 2-2 two, two exposure at the shopping centre near her daughter's placement cancelled, lockdown in the house, yep. <sighs> Kerry, I don't think it's scary so much as boring. I'm, I'm starting to get bored with being, being locked down and I'm not a, I'm not a, hmm, a gad about, I'm not a social butterfly who's in and out all day or anyway. I quite like being at home, but I'm really getting sick of it now. Um, right. It's August. Did I say the wrong um, month, Karen? Because, you know, are you sure it's August? <laughs> Sometimes I think we're in an alternative universe here. It's a bit like, um, what was that... Um, Twilight Zone. <laughs> All right, there it is. It's the 24th of August. Um, Alrighty now. Okay, now. Glennis would survive. Pantry, non food pantry, freezer, full good for three months. Yes, and keep your car full. <sighs> okay. Cannot stress enough about keeping your car full now i try to even when i'm just driving normally i very rarely let my car get under half full now i know i try to shop the petrol sales cycle and line it up with my dockets and whatever but i try to not let my car get under half we don't have a good petrol reserve our fuel reserves for this country are disgusting 
absolutely disgusting and it would not take much for us to just run out. I know our government says, no, 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 that won't happen. Baloney, folks, baloney. It could happen. Again, not trying to scare you or anything. I'm just saying keep your car full <laughs> if you can. Just keep your car full. Um, okay, Kathy, so you need to... Kathy's freezer died and her pantry's nearly empty, but no stress. She's got a new freezer coming. Yes, congratulations. Um, and you'll be able to do a huge shop, so that's good. Look, um, for the time being, neither of these events have been in mainstream media. You didn't just sort of glanced over them. They've not focused on them and made them a huge drama as they intend, you know, often do. They they exaggerate things to the point of just, you know, creating the frenzy. So keep an eye on the news. As soon as that starts to happen, though, the supermarkets will empty, absolutely just empty, and it will be worse than um, going into our first lockdown last year. So keep an eye on them. Um, um, all right. Kathy, it's dental surgery. All right, I'll be thinking of you. So here we go. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I've just been thinking about this. A very sensible topic for today. I've increased my grocery budget to be being working my, without panic buying. Much calmer but ongoing approach. Yes, you don't need to panic. What you do need to do is make a list of everything you use, make a list of everything you need. Hopefully they'll line up. Work out how long you want your pantry to last you for, whether it be a month, three months, six months, 12 months, 10 years, whatever. And then work out how much of everything you need to have to last that time. Now, unless you're absolutely rolling in money, you can't afford to go out and buy everything in the quantities you'll need all at once. It would be fun. I would. I think I'd really enjoy it if I could. But it'd be a massive shop. So you, you plan it strategically. And if you can add just a couple of things each week, keep an eye on the sales. Now, grocery sales have not been really good. They've been a bit disappointing. <laughs> but, you know, keep an eye out and shop around. And you can do it. Um, you're able to... Um, fill your pantry without spending a small fortune, spending more than you thought you should, you'd be able to do it on budget. But it's um, baby steps and consistency. You can't stop, start, stop, start. You just need to do it. Every time you shop, add a bit more to your stockpile. And especially if you can get things on half price, like tea bags, if they're on half price, you buy two because you're getting one free pretty much. You're going to buy it anyway at full price, so you might as well buy the two at half price. Um, right. There we go. Yeah, Faith. My friend in Sydney who knows a few truckies that deliver food for Woolworths said they are organising a strike for two weeks. Yeah, from what, look, I spent hours today just sitting and I felt like a stalker trying to contact people that I know. I was trying to contact my cousin, who's either of them, who are truck drivers, couldn't get in touch with them. Um, so then I was hunting around people I, I know that are still in the business, still in the industry, just to see what is happening. And, oh, Everyone said, yeah, it's going ahead. It's going ahead. 
And the consensus was, you know, while they may not block the borders for two weeks, the disruption will be enough to um, put the deliveries two weeks behind. Now, that sort of really bothers me a bit because you've got, you know, produce that's not going to keep for two weeks. So I sort of feel really bad about that. but it's out of my hands and that's an extra thing we don't need to really worry about. Um, yes, you can make bread without yeast. It's easier with yeast. Um, uh, Kathleen needs 10, uses 10. A milk, I'm guessing, Kathleen. So you bought a year supply of powdered last year, still going strong. Powdered milk, if you go back to my Forever Foods video, powdered milk lasts for ages. And if you can freeze it, it will keep even longer. Now, it has a best before date. Full cream tends to go rancid, for want of a better term, faster than the low-fat, non-fat skim milk varieties but it still keeps for years and years and years. And if you can get it um, vacuum sealed and if you can pop a couple of oxy oxygen absorbers in the package as you vacuum seal it, it will last even longer. So, that's Kathy. Yeah, milk is... <laughs> I remember those days when I would be buying nine... You know, I'd be buying three litres, three three-litre bottles of milk a week and sometimes over the weekend have to go and get another one. Oy. Now that they've grown up and they don't um, have it on the cereal and stuff as much, it, it looks much better, lasts as much later. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, Julie's saying probably longer than two weeks. Well, that was so that was what I was explaining. Even if the blockade doesn't last for two weeks, the disruption to the supply chain could be two weeks, at least two weeks by the time, because then they've got to get everything going again and moving again. And yeah. So <laughs> thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> Hope I'm a good legend and not a bad one. <laughs> oh. Cheese damper, yes. Damper's really good. Scones are really good. Um, you can make naan. Now, if, you, hmm, if you've got powdered milk, you can make yogurt and you can use yogurt um, to do your naan, do your tortillas, do your flatbreads and things too, um, which is really nice. Um, Oh, Kathy, oh gosh, that fruit salad cake. You know what? I have a tin of fruit salad. <laughs> That's really funny that you mentioned that. There's a tin of fruit salad on the pantry shelf and it was given to us. And I keep thinking, I'm going to open that and make fruit salad cake. I'm going to open that and make fruit salad cake. And then I get sidetracked and just make up my normal, you know, one bowl cake and throw in chocolate chips or something. And then I go, oh fruit salad cake so when I'm finished here I'm going to get the tin and put it over here on the bench and tomorrow I will make fruit salad cake it's a really good cake ladies do you know what I did um, over the weekend now you know um, our cranberry hootie creek biscuits the recipes in the recipe file or if you go to the website go to the cheapskates club website and type in cran cranberry hootie creeks the recipe will come up but I had a little, well, not quite a half a packet of white chopped chips and I had hmm, maybe half a cup of craisins left and I was baking anyway. So I made, oh, they were so good, cranberry Hootie Creek loaf cakes because I just made them in the little mini loaf tins. Oh my goodness, they were so good. And all it was was just my basic cake mixture with... I think I used to, I probably used a good, probably a good tablespoon of vanilla. I just gave it a really good slurp of vanilla. Um, and then I added, um, 
half a cup of coconut, some of the half a packet of white chalk chips and the cranberries, craisins that I had, mixed it all up, put it in the loaf, little loaf tins and made these little mini cranberry hootie creek loaf cakes. Oh my goodness, they were so good. So I'll write that recipe out for you, but oh my gosh, they were so good. And that was just uh, using my basic one bowl cake mix and adding extra things to it, but boy, they were good. Oh my gosh. Mm. Um, Kathy, give me about 20 minutes after we're finished because um, before I can do anything to it, I need to let it run through its pro run through the processes after we finish. And I'll put a link underneath here straight to that blog post for you with the list. Um, just remember the prices will be, <laughs> if I put prices on that one, the prices will be out of date. Um, yeah. And then that, if that helps you, great. Um, um, Vaughn says... I read last year that trucks will stop delivering to the supermarkets in 2021 as part of the lockdowns to cripple the country. Who do we believe? Okay. Well, I hadn't heard that. Um, in fact, I hadn't heard anything about trucks until New South Wales started their lockdowns and um, the um, construction workers did their blockade across the Harbour Bridge and and that and then when Queensland wanted truck drivers to have testing every three days and and then they wanted them to have to have proof of vaccination and that's when I started to take notice of what was going on because more and more I was hearing more and more about it um trust your gut seriously um trust your gut if you get that little niggling feeling that you need to go out and get bread, go and get it. If you get that little niggling feeling that you need to stock up and hunker down, bunker down at home, do it. Don't ignore If you've got that little feeling in your gut, trust it. Trust your intuition. You know, you know you and you know your world. I mean, we all live in the same world, but you know your circumstances, you know your life and your lifestyle. So trust, trust your intuition. Um, because honestly, right here and right now, I don't know who to trust either. I don't know who to trust either. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Faith. You know, my mum was a single mum for a long time too when my father died, but she raised us. I don't know how she, I don't know why she should, she should have turned in her mother button, I'm sure. But um, it's not easy. It's absolutely not easy. And if you're in lockdown and your little one's at home, you have my utmost admiration, absolutely utmost admiration. Um, Yvonne stocked up on powdered chicken, beef and vegetable stocks. You can do anything with them. Um, I'm working on, guys, this is completely off topic again, but something for you to look forward to. How's that? Because um, you all know I go crazy in summer with dehydrating and I dehydrate all sorts of stuff. So I'm working on um, powders, making vegetable powders, making fruit powders, a few years ago, not last year, because we're on lockdown, it must have been the year before, mushrooms were really, really, really cheap. They were like, I was paying like $3 a kilo for mushrooms. And I bottled heaps and heaps and heaps of them. I pressure canned kilos and kilos and kilos of them. And we use them. They are great. I think I've only got about two jars left. But I dehydrated a whole heap too. Now, if you're going to dehydrate mushrooms, I really suggest you do it outside because they stink to high heaven. You do not want to dehydrate mushrooms in the house. 
But then I had all these dehydrated mushrooms and I was using them, putting them in casseroles and pasta things and that. And then, bazinga, I needed um, cream of mushroom soup, the powdered cream of mushroom soup for a particular recipe that I make. And I went, I can use the basic cream of anything soup recipe. I can powder some of the mushrooms and I've got cream of mushroom soup powder. So that had me thinking because I do make, um, I do um, powder the um, silver beet and, um, and use that in pasta sauces and soups and things too. But that had me thinking about other things that I could powder. What can we powder? What vegetables do I have? Like onion, obviously, garlic, obviously. Um, so I have a whole thing coming on dehydrating different fruits and veggies and then turning them into powders because you can have, I can have um, both dehydrators full, the trays absolutely full of um, onions and by the time they're powdered down, it doesn't, it hardly fills a pint jar. So powdered is, the, the flavour is really concentrated, but it takes up so much less shelf space. So I have had so much fun doing this. So I'm really, really enjoying it. So they will be coming. I was sort of planning on them for maybe later towards summer when we get um start getting our harvests in again and everyone needs ways to process them. Um, Kerry's got herbs and spices. Yep, we did too. Okay, now I've lost. Sorry, I clicked on something. Um, So, do, do, do. I've lost my spot. Sorry, guys. Here we go. The pumpkins. Can you see the pumpkins? Um, I have three pumpkins that are one, two, three to be processed. One's going to be soup. So, it's going to be chopped up and baked and then pureed and turned into soup. One is going to be chopped up and baked and pureed and dried for pumpkin powder which i did last year and it works really well and the other one is going to be chopped up and we're going to eat it we'll have it roasted we'll have it i will make mummy's special yellow potato <laughs> boys aren't around when my the boys didn't like pumpkin steamed pumpkin when they were little and they wouldn't eat it so i just started mashing it and putting it in the potato and I just told them it was Mummy's special yellow potato and they'd just gulp it down. So ever since it's been Mummy's special yellow potato and here they are 28 and 30 and they still eat Mummy's special yellow potato. Um, so, yeah, um, Hannah brought them down to me oh, when she could come down, which was weeks ago when she cut my hair. So that was ages ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Kerry, now's the time to do your tomatoes. If you haven't started your tomatoes, I posted a thing over on Cheapskate's Chatter about um, now's the time to start. Your, if you're starting your tomatoes from seeds, start them now um, so that then they should be ready by, for down here, I like to get my tomatoes in the ground by no later than the first week in October. Um and then I just put soft drink bottles over them to act like little hot houses. But it just gives them just gives them a better start. And when I do that, we have tomatoes for Christmas. If I leave it too much later, we don't get tomatoes for Christmas. And I hate buying tomatoes at Christmas because they're so expensive. Um, nah. Oh. That sounds like a really nice lifestyle, Osgal. Live next to a cattle and crop station. So you're, you're rural, remote, I would say, and that would be my dream. Okay. All right. 
Um, here we go. Fire lighters. Fire lighters, we're coming on to, into the end of winter here. So your fire lighters and stuff should start to be on clearance in Coles and Woolworths. Um, I got a whole heap of Aldi before winter started. They were a dollar a box. They were a dollar ninety nine a box. Now I'm marked down to a dollar a box, and I think I bought about twenty boxes of them because we use them when we go camping too. Um, so, <sighs> um, fire lighters are really, really good for your wood fire. Jane is tormenting us. She's got Tim Tams all stocked up. That's just not fair, Jane. Absolutely not fair. Um, uh, yep, Kerry doesn't let her car get under. Uh, what does that Jane says, there was a warning not to go out and panic by tonight in the news. Bluey and I looked at each other and thought, tomorrow there will be nothing on the shelves. There won't be. As soon as they say that, people just go crazy. And I've started to notice, <laughs> started to notice that, you know, the people that bought the, um, cleared the shelves of flour and cleared the shelves of yeast and rice and all that sort of stuff, this time last year or March, April, May last year when we were doing the first round of lockdowns, I wonder what they did with it. I wonder what they, I wonder if they actually know how to how to cook, how to bake, you know, or did they just go, I know flour is used for something so we'll take it. I wonder. I always want to know. Um... Hannah asked me the same thing, Kerry, this afternoon. She would message me this afternoon and asked if I'd heard if there'd been any restrictions on anything. I haven't heard of anything. I do know when I was at Coles a couple of weeks ago, um, I was chatting to the woman there and chat to her all the time. And I love going to my Coles because the staff, most of the staff have been there since it opened and it's been open coming up 50 years it's an amazing, it's just the loveliest store. And I was talking to her and she had this big pile of toilet paper on the floor behind her. She could hardly move. And I, I just happened to say what happened. And she had, um, it must have been when we went back into lockdown this time before they extended it. And she said she had one man come through and all he had in his trolley was toilet paper, nothing else. And he had it in the trolley, under the trolley. He had it absolutely everywhere. And she just said to him, I'm really sorry, but you cannot possibly need that much toilet paper. There's a limit of two packets. And she took it off him. So, um I haven't heard about anything else being limited. I was wondering about meat, but I don't know because we don't need any. So I haven't got any room in the freezer, so I can't um, go and see. But, yeah, I don't know. Oh, dear. Yeah, keep your car full, folks. Um, yeah, see Yvonne, there you go. The, yeah, the blockades are, um, as I understand it, they will be nationwide. Um, the toll strike is a separate thing, but they're just happening about the same time. Here's Delaney. Twice I was accused of spreading disease in Coles at Abyssinians. Well, good on you for thinking to do that. I don't think I'd have the um, common sense to think to do that. I'm really sorry too. People are stupid. Look, okay. Um, 
had a conversation with the card ladies on Saturday and the upshot is you can't fix stupid. There is nothing we can do to fix stupid. Stupid is stupid and will always be stupid. <sighs> we need to be a bit like the Prime Minister and learn to live with stupid. Um, he wants us to learn to live with the virus. Well, I think we need to learn to live with stupid. My way of doing it is just looking at and thinking, you're so stupid and nothing I can say or do will fix that. So there is no point in me getting upset over you being stupid. And I sort of almost switch people out of my mind if they're that, um, that really, really terribly, terribly stupid. Because um, you just can't fix stupid. You just can't. And we get upset and they don't. And um, they're happy and we're not. So I try to ignore them. Thank you, Jules. Not quite finished. Still missing some tiles from up here because we had to special order them. And then with lockdowns and things happening in the family and then lockdowns and things happening in the family and then other things happening and now lockdowns we haven't actually been able to go because we have to go and pick them up because they um are special run so hmm, it will be finished one day that's the only thing left to do thank goodness okay lucinda there are gazillion variations of flatbreads and people think it's really hard to make naan. It's not. It's just flour and yogurt. It's really simple. Um, same with pita bread. It's really, really easy to make. Um, I think we've been brainwashed into thinking that we can't do these things. We are encouraged to buy them, and that's fine. I have no problem with people buying them. But you can do it yourself if you want to. It's like making yogurt. People, you know, even even today, um, people are still amazed that they can make yogurt at home. Um, so, yep, I think lots of mums did that. Glennis, half and half, half powdered, half fresh, to um, stretch it and stretch the grocery budget. Uh, hello, Kathy. Uh, 18 months ago, they hit the heebie jeebies and stuffed up big time. Yep. Uh, it can be done. It can be done. If I, guys, if I can do this, if I can fill my pantry, if I can raise my family, if I can, if anyone can. Because I don't have any special skills, um, stubbornness, but you know. All right. Make a list. Make a list of what you need. And if you can't get it in brand A, be prepared to take it in brand B. That's the other thing that's happening. I noticed um, people are saying, because I must think that I'm quite odd, because I was in Aldi last week and I was walking around and I'm going, oh, my goodness, there's nothing in this shop. This shop is just empty. And everything was just, you know, a little, a little of, there was not a full bay of anything. And I'm like, why, 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 why am I the only one seeing the shortages? So then we went down to Coles and it was the same. Now, I've been shopping at that Coles. Well, my mum used to shop there when I was a child. So pretty much most of my life. And it's always sort of had the similar sort of layout. But stuff is so rearranged now and really spread out. And where there would be, you know, um, in a bay, the, the bay would be full and you'd have, you know, two or three things stacked on each other and they go back on the shelf now it's just one layer and one row deep and you know things are really spread out 
And I did notice that in both Aldi and Coles, frozen vegetables were really scarce. Now I don't know why, um, if there's been a run on frozen veg, I don't know, but I was after Coles do quite good value um, frozen broccoli and corn cobs. So um, for a treat, sometimes I will buy the little corn cobs. Couldn't get them. They were just out. I was like, and then I noticed that, you know, um, I was looking in the jams, the spreads, you know, jams, Vegemite, peanut butter, Nutella type stuff. And a lot of the ones that I would have been expecting to be able to buy just weren't there. There wasn't even a place on the shelf for them. So um, they're just not stocking them. Um, same with the fruit juices. I went to get fruit juice because um, I have a recipe that I use one recipe and I use fruit juice in it and I couldn't get it. So I have to hunt around and try and find, find another one that will substitute. But anyway, so there are, the, the shortages are there. Um, and someone said to me, oh, well, if there's a substitute, it's not really a shortage. But yeah, it is a shortage because that's a whole range that's deleted, that's gone, that's no longer available. So that's, you know, it's not coming back. So that creates um, a gap in, in that area. Um, <laughs> do you do them outside? I have to do them outside because my goodness, they stink. The mushroom powder, Delaney, the mushroom powder is to die for. And in gravy, just a plain, you know, flour, flour, water, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, gravy, and mushroom powder. Oh my goodness, it is to die for. Absolutely amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Powdered tomato, yep, it works really well. I remember it. I've never used it, but I do remember it. It was in foil packets, is that right? Um, something else oh, I mum used to use all the time was an edgel product in a little tin. It was called Tomato Supreme and it was tomatoes and celery and onions, I think, in this sort of sauce, but it was like a creamy sauce but without the cream, if that makes sense. And she used to use it, mum used to use it for pizza bases. She would spread that on pizza bases, put cheese on it, and that was our pizza. If we were really, really um, fancy, she would mash soybeans and put the soybeans through the tomato supreme, spread that on the pizza base, put it with cheese, and that was delicious too. Um, oops. Lunchbox cookies, yes. Condensed milk, yep. That's the only thing I buy margarine for is lunchbox cookies. Um, no dishwashing liquid. Got some soap, just swish soap in the water. It works just as well. Um, all right, let me go. Found it hasn't even heat for the last few days. Oh dear, that's no good. People panic buying. Oh, Joe, that's terrible. I sound like Nana. <laughs> I'm probably old enough to be Nana. <laughs> I hope that I hope that's a compliment, Kathleen. <laughs> oh dear. There you go, Delaney. Uh, no, Kerry does tomato magic. Dehydrated tomato skins. See now, this is really funny. So my friend Carol dehydrates, makes a tomato sauce. Or the pasta sauce and she skins the tomatoes and stuff i don't i chop the tomatoes and i cook them and because i blend it with the stick blender i just leave the skins on so i don't have tomato skins to dehydrate um oh slow cooker bread that sounds good um
those breads, Delaney, they're a bit like my cakes. I have rustic cakes. Not a cake decorator at all, guys. Um, whole lot of whole lot of things all sort of crashed at the same time. COVID hit, so we didn't have backpackers. We had terrible drought. Then we had the shocking floods earlier this year. Um, it's a whole lot of circumstances have all just crashed together to make a huge, big mess of, of pretty much of our um, grain, fruits, vegetables. So, yeah. All right, Lucinda. Sprouts, yes. And sprouts are really easy to do. You don't need anything fancy to do them. Um, ooh, sprouts, pea sprouts mixed with potato or pumpkin. Burgers, yum. Okay. Um, all right. 20 trays of celery from the garden. Tomorrow, lettuce leaves for super greens. Cool. Oh, I can't stop stupid. You can't, you cannot help stupid. So you just can't. I'm lucky my boys aren't here. They'd be rolling their eyes at me and telling me you can't say things like that. But you know what? It's true. Okay. Apparently the skins and seeds of tomatoes contain lectins, which are not healthy for you. So I've heard from Dr. Stephen Gundry. Huh. Okay. I'll do some research, Paula, and find out. But I honestly just, because I just whiz it with stick blender, so I don't puree it and mm, I'm a bit of a rustic cook. That's a nice term for it, other than you know, rough and um rough and ready. Okay, so guys, we've got these things coming, they're gonna come, they're happening. We can't we we can't do anything about it to stop it, but we can prepare for it. And we can do it without panicking, we can do it without going into debt we just need to think about it so like i said um when when we finish here i'm going to go and get the tuna fruit salad to make the fruit salad cake but have a have a quick look at your pantry and your shopping list and see what you need make sure you've got enough to last you at least a couple of weeks and if you do need to go shopping try and do it sooner rather than later um, just so you're prepared because it is much better to be prepared and not need it because at the very you know if the very worst thing is that you shop two weeks ahead and you won't need to go anyway so whether it happens or not you'll be right and i think for the peace of for peace of mind it's just it's just a sensible thing to do if you can do it you know, if you can't do it, if your pantry's full, then you can sit back and relax. Okay, now, I've kept you over time again. I'm really sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, now, um, thank you for joining me, listening to me waffle on. Um, if you liked our show tonight, again, please give us a thumbs up. And if you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, then please click the share button and send them the link. That's that's all they'll get is the link. We won't hound them with anything else. I don't do that. I don't send, you know, newsletters and emails and all sorts of advertising and stuff. I don't do that. Just click the share button and send them the link. Have a great week, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay warm if you're in Victoria at the moment. It's freezing cold. And I will be back next week, um, next Tuesday night, and hopefully we'll, um, we'll all be back together, happy and healthy. I'll say good night and thank you for joining me. I'll be back on...
Daddy Fest. There you go. Okay. Bye.